Neil Before Blog presents Neil Before Pod. Hello and welcome to the Neil Before Pod interview segment. I'm your host Craig and I had the absolute pleasure of speaking to actors Sylvester McCoy, Robert Picardo and John Bett, who are impressing audiences with their hilarious stage show, A Joke, currently playing at the Edinburgh Fringe. The show is about three men who think they are the components of a joke and the play deconstructs what it takes to be funny by exploring the possibilities. It's a laugh riot and if you're in Edinburgh, then do get yourselves along to see it. The link to where to buy tickets is in the show notes. So just click on that and uh, get yourselves along for a hilarious early evening of entertainment. So I talked to the actors about the show and some other things too, so I hope you enjoy. I'm here with Sylvester McCoy, Robert Picardo and John Bett, the stars of the stage show A Joke. Hi, welcome on. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, um... Back in Edinburgh, second year with this show, uh, first year for yourself, John. Yes, indeed. Um, so, and the newbie. <laughs> so, how is it being back, and um, how's the fringe for you this year? Well, I've just had a haircut, so my fringe is gone. <laughs> but, um, being back is great, you know, and Bob, he can't grow a fringe, but you've got your fringe. Yeah, I've got quite a lot of fringe. <laughs> So we know about haircuts, that's good. Yes. Uh, and how about the Fringe Festival? How's that going this year? Great. I think, yeah, it's great. I mean, it's really great. I've, I've been coming since the 1970s. And um, they still let me in. <laughs> and it's just got bigger. Like, like Dropsy, it has grew. It has, indeed. Yeah. So have you guys seen anything that um, you'd recommend to listeners? Ken. Ken. It's a piece about Ken Campbell. All right. And it's quite gloriously funny but, um, yeah it's great I would recommend that and um, well, yeah. and I uh, speaking as someone who really only has heard of Ken Campbell mm-hmm. through Sylvester's stories as because he was such a major force in, in uh Sylvester's career um so I've heard a little about him but uh, it's it's completely entertaining whether you know any, the play just you know leads you from the beginning so yeah. you don't have to know anything in advance about him. the two uh Performers are extraordinary in it, and it's a really delightful and, and moving evening. And uh, proselytizing has worked very well, because I'm going to go and see it. <laughs> <laughs> really, yeah, we get a kickback on every ticket. Uh, so. Word of mouth, commission, it's all good. Uh, what about yourself, John? What have you seen that you um, uh, Well, I haven't seen all that much. I, uh, I, I was too late to go and see the Barbara Seville, which I thoroughly mm-hmm. enjoyed. Uh, I thought it was great. Because oh, I went to the bar where you went to see. I went to see. <laughs> and I went to Glasgow to see Van Morrison, which is oh, always right. a treat. Yeah. But I know that's not part of the Fringe Festival. But oh, they don't right. talk about Glasgow here. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, they said that. But you know, they don't like right. talk right. about it. You can cut that part out. Like <laughs> I'm not originally from Edinburgh, so I'm equal opportunities. Glasgow, <laughs> Edinburgh, fine, fine by me. And as a as a newcomer to the Fringe Festival, this is only my second yep. season working here, and I'd only been as an audience member once before. It's just one of the great events of the world it's mm-hmm. unlike uh, anything else we to find you know it's literally nearly 4,000 plays that yeah. are happening over the course of four weeks and something like 56,000 performances over those four weeks it's just and the sun show during rehearsals which is pretty good yeah we've had we've had some very nice weather we've had a great summer only had hailstones once uh, <laughs> a good amount of sun yeah. I love the bus system here which I fall in love with yeah, yeah. you realise when you saw those hailstones why golf was invented yeah <laughs> <laughs> Just smacking them off the car. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, this is your second year doing this show, and, and it seems it's a very much a passion project to you based on the fact it was crowdfunded and things like that. Mm-hmm. How did you, you guys get involved, and, and John as well? How did you get involved over um, as a kind of extra actor from last year? There was someone different, and uh, this year, obviously, it's yourself. Do you want to talk about the genesis of it? Well, yeah, well, I got involved because Dan Freeman, who wrote it, and I worked together a lot. And we were very close and friendly, and, he, and I decided I didn't really want to do theatre anymore because it's, a, it's the hardest kind of work an actor does. So, um, and I thought, well, I'm going to just chill out and do films I can, conventions <laughs> around the world. And anyway, he said, I've written, I want to write a play for you, and I thought, oh, we'll run and do it. And he did. And then he said to me, oh, um, do, you know, do you know you know Paul Picardo, don't you? I said, yeah. He said, well, um, could you get him in this radio audio thing we're doing? And then after Bob did that and passed the test, he said, do you think he might do the play? And then so 
Dan wrote it for, with Bob and myself in, 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 in my and another, in, another actor who was an English actor. Mm-hmm. We sadly couldn't do this. Yeah. I mean, not sadly. You know. That's a terrible thing. Well, that's right. <laughs> and, and, and it's a nightmare, by the way. This is me. I, you don't mind, you're used to this. Yes, I am. I'm a nightmare. Anyway, that's kind of vaguely. I was in Bob and Bob, and then, and then um, uh, Richard couldn't do it this year, and so with all oh God, who could we find? And our director found. This is a new director this year, uh, Tony Kelly, who I've worked with uh, quite a few times uh, as an actor and as a director. So, um, he gave me a call. And I took a call. I accepted the call. And he had a mark. <laughs> Do you regret yeah. and, 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 and I don't regret a moment. And great, great. It's this, the fact of the matter is he did regret it to about the first two thirds of rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> and he's since changed his mind. <laughs> and of course, I worked uh, with um, Johnny before, a hundred years ago, with his thing called. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, was the Lord of the Sea. John McGrath, the great and part of the official festival. Yeah. They tried to, to ignore us. But yes, we were being posh then, weren't we? I'm not going to ask that. Lord Murd. Yeah. It was Rupert Murdoch in disguise. He is. And you played Scotland. I've been Scotland. Wow. I, yeah. All of Scotland. All of Scotland. I was the whole of Scotland. <laughs> I've got a sausage. I've got a cool. A bony human sausage. It's myself. Huh. And uh, Rob Bob was one of your requirements that you got to sing in the play. It seems you like to no, sing no, in all no, your no, projects. No, no, yeah. No, I mean, I, it's not a requirement. But it is a requirement for Sylvester to play spoons. But <laughs> it's in my contract. In your contract. Yes. It's that close. I this has to be honoured. He asked if I were. He knew that I sang on Star Trek, so he knew that I. And then he asked if I was willing to sing. And uh, I suppose I didn't say no. <laughs> so, so, but it's a you know it's actually very charming. It's, it's a sweet it's a sweet little yeah. song, and, and you need a you know um, if you if you we've learned from Shakespeare that if, they, that if you don't know how to end your comedy, everybody either gets married at the end, everybody dances, yeah. or everybody sings. Well, we forgot to get married. <laughs> what we, we forgot, to, we get forgot to get married. Yeah. Next year, next year. Next year. Yeah. Really, he's already asked, and yeah. I'm just thinking about Think it. Think about it. <laughs> So we're married. <laughs> yes. Oh, are we? Uh, I think we should have a divorce for my half of the time. <laughs> well, the, the script has changed a little bit since last year. Bit, yes. And the presentation as well. Uh, when I saw it last year, it was more in the round, yeah. whereas this year it's straight on. So well, we, we thought we knew it was in the round, but there was another one of the actors on the stage. <laughs> I'm surprised to them. My recollection was it was in the three quarter, which means there's a whole side of the audience I can play. <laughs> right, no recollection. They were your fans. I didn't know, but I showed them my best feature. Yes, you did. <laughs> so was that a change that came by the kind of location, or is it just um, the kind of... Yeah. It's, yeah, we, we have this much and more. We have this of chandeliers. Yes. Yeah. Ah, we have chandeliers everywhere we go. Each one of those chandeliers is worth a million pounds. Did, did you hear that, Wow. So if you if come to see the play, just look at the chandeliers. <laughs> you don't yeah, like you've got your money's worth well already. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, cause I've heard that with plays, so you have to be adaptable with the location that you're in. Sometimes you might get to expand, sometimes you might not. It is a very comfortable space. We all yeah. like it to play in. Yeah. And, uh, the, the sound I think works quite well. Yeah. People have told us that. When you do the right comedy, it can be in, in, interesting, a bit difficult, especially visual comedy, because if someone's behind you and you're going, they don't see the face that you make. You know yeah. I mean? so you to, but whereas for the cross arts, you just look out, bang. So it makes that kind of comedy crisper. Mm-hmm. Whereas, but then in the round is much more intimate, which is, you know, the positive side of that, you, you know, mm-hmm. you, 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 which makes it that enjoyable. Yeah, it's harder to spit on the audience this year. Well, they're a bit time. further away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If, if, I mean, unintentionally spit. I would never intentionally spit. It's <laughs> just when I get excited. Yeah. Front three rows will get wet. <laughs> <laughs> You've all done film, TV, and uh, theatre. So, do you have a preference? You mentioned that is the hardest. No, Radio. No, no, no. You don't you have, have to learn the lines. And you don't. And, you know, and the set doesn't wobble. And you're six feet tall. That's <laughs> great. And different and tapes. Nobody laughs at radio unless the producer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I think the, you know, for me, I mean, the the quality of a, a live performance is is great fun. Uh, 
and it varies every day, people don't realise that yeah. how much an audience can affect a fixed yeah. every day. They, they dictate they do. what happens when they keep you awake. <laughs> you bored, don't laugh when you think they're going to laugh. Laugh when they haven't laughed before. Oh, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Interesting. Now, I suppose theatre is the best, but as I said earlier, you know, bailing out, because it is quite exhausting. <laughs> I can imagine, especially with how many shows you've got on as well. Yeah. There's mm-hmm. so many of them doing it for an hour each day and, and things like that. So, yeah. Some days are two hours, some days are four hours, some days are, you know. It's Ken Campbell's was 21 hours, two and two hours. <laughs> we have a civilised time at 4 <laughs> Yes, but it means we get, we get to the bar by 5.30, yes. yeah. which is great. I mean, if you don't, you don't want to be at an 11 a.m. show and be gone to the bar at noon, or maybe you do, but not. I think it's just... A, in Scotland, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. It's not yeah. expected. Yeah. Well... After lunchtime, you're, you're okay. You're, I was hoping to make it till 6 o'clock, frankly, <laughs> but uh, 5.30 is okay. Or during the fringe, there is no... No, there's no... Well, I noticed there's actually... The only thing that, the only thing that there's more of than theater is drinking here. <laughs> so if you're thinking, it just, just in case that you're, you're not interested in theater, you should still come to the fringe anyway. Yeah. Because you'll have a great time ignoring the theater and just drinking outside the theater venues. But uh, but we, we hope that the one play that you'll see when you come is a joke. Yeah. And we should talk about the joke, really. Yes. We forgot to talk about the play. Yeah, That's from Ken, which is okay. great, yeah. which was other yeah. things, but the joke. Yeah, so mm-hmm. the basically it's a deconstructing the concept of a joke. It's how it is. Yeah, well, I wondered. Ah, That's <laughs> I know, I know. You've been telling you what your job is. But, uh, no, no, I need to know. So, yeah, uh, so you deconstruct it because it's one of those long running questions, isn't it? In, in anything, what's funny? Yeah. You know, like what makes something funny? Because obviously the uh, humour is more subjective than a lot of other things. Some will find something hilarious and others won't. So, was that kind of the the idea behind it, just to explore what might be funny? Yes, I think that was Dan's thing, was to work out what was humorous and what wasn't. And also, you have a great excuse to tell bad jokes. You know, and, and, and then you deconstruct it. I mean, I love the idea of doing a racist joke, and then the audience laugh, and then you deconstruct it, and then they look embarrassed. <laughs> and the, the through line of the narrative is the jokes get a bit more coherent as it goes on as well. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's well, the I'm responsible for the incoherent ones. <laughs> the man without I, 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 I can <laughs> claims he wrote the character for me, and then I read the play, and I'm playing the stupidest character <laughs> I've ever played before. And I'm thinking, what exactly does he think of me? Uh, well, no, now you know what he thinks. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, I, I, I said uh, I said to Dan back then. I said it to, to John when he joined our cast. Normally, the kind of roles I play not leave out the accent, but the attitude of the British character is what I would normally. You know, I usually play yeah. the, uh, sarcastic and the, the, the one with the, the disdainer. Oh, wow. like so no no acting required. <laughs> <laughs> so to play the to play the the kind of like. Uh, you know, enthusiastic numbnuts. Yeah. Is numbnuts a British word? Because we um, use that at home. Yeah, we know there we go. Yeah, yeah. And you do it so well. <laughs> yeah, this is a new, a new. It's a new. It's a new. A new it's route. A new, exactly. route. Yeah. a new route. And you're sort of the hopeful optimist as well. So yes. Is that kind of characters you like to play? Um, or uh, hopeful, optimistic type characters? Uh, that was my whole life, really. Yeah. Hopeful, optimist, and I was wrong. <laughs> It's hard to be optimistic back home in the States at the moment. It's actually hard. But, but I'm very optimistic. optimistic. Or possibly over country. here. No, it is. It's not possibly. Yeah. It's not. <laughs> no. no, I mean, we started it off with Brexit. And <laughs> you took up the baton and ran and made it even more exaggerated. What was the name of the play about the Fourth Estate that you... The satire of the Fourth Estate. Yeah. Well, if you turn it into the assassination of the Fourth Estate, you could go do it. Yeah, yeah that's, right. Right. That's, that's exactly, that's what, exactly what it is. Yeah, so, yeah he's because destroying democracy in America. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously you're the cynic, John. I, 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 I'm the self-confessed bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm obviously the bad guy. They're more fun. Really. Yeah. <laughs> and and I'm English, I don't know what... I'm not really English, of course. <laughs> but I'm supposed to be English. And do you enjoy playing cynical characters? Yes, I do, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just to get to drag the mood down. <laughs> he he's constantly he he is the for meaninglessness mm-hmm. that nothing has any meaning, and of course the Irishman is searching for meaning, and the Scotsman is along for the ride. He's happy for 
you know, whatever's happening as long as people are engaged and doing something. Yeah. He's happy to be on the journey, which ultimately, because they represent different viewpoints yeah. of, of life. You have the, you know, uh, John's character being so cynical and negative, you kind of wonder, you know, why bother? Why mm-hmm. why live at all if you're going to be that? Whereas, and then the Irishman is the, the one who's searching for meaning, but but optimistically, and his optimism is bruised a bit by the by the Englishman's negativity. And my character is just, you know, uh, my key line is, you know, why does it have to be anything? Why does yeah. life have to mean anything? Let's just be. Is the his you know, Good philosophy? Yeah. Years ago, I was in a social scene coming with two of the stag and black like oh, and uh, one of the founders said to me, "You're not really a socialist. What you are is a romantic anarchist." <laughs> I, think I, a, I think I'm a romantic anarchist in this. Uh, yes. you know, it's a lovely you know, point. Great thing he gets romantic. a lot of laughs out of negativity, which is not easy to do, yeah. especially when a character, you know, character that kind of announces his worldview and doesn't really change that kind of play. He gets, he, John gets, squeezes maximum amusement out of that. That's where Samuel Beckett tries that, doesn't he? He does it very well, yeah. So what do you see yourselves doing next? Is the play going to um, expand? Living. Living, just take some time, chill out. At my age, that's all I see myself doing next. <laughs> Me, I'm off to go to Bangkok by train, all the way from London, England. Oh, wow. Yep, I'm going through Paris to pick up a train to Mar- Moscow, Moscow to... Um, Moscow to Mongolia, Mongolia to China, China to Vietnam, Vietnam to... He's about to read his first grandchild. Yeah, my first grandchild is about to come into the world. Oh, wow. Congrats. A little girl called Lily, we think. Well, we'll, we'll, they're going to say to her, hello, Lily, and if she goes, yeah, I'll call her friend. I'm chasing the lilies of the field. Yeah. I am very sick of a little (laughs) punt in for the show that I'm doing next, which is something I've written and directed, uh, called Tipping the Hat. Uh It's a show about Flanders and Swan. And it's going on at the Orin Moor, the Travers, and Hadrian House. Did you yeah. And when does that drop? Uh, it starts on the 24th of September. All oh, right, so soon. very soon. And because I haven't uh, done enough science fiction in my life, <laughs> I will be in the, the next season of Orville, the South Park Farley. Oh, yes. Yeah, you were in the, the first season. I had a cameo on that. Now I have. Uh, I uh, can't get enough science fiction. It can't so get enough science fiction. <laughs> oh, I only did. I've already done it. All right. And uh, I, uh, they have, I think, ten new episodes. Oh, All right. Or that, that was a puppet we had, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The duck. The duck, yeah. yeah. Or the... <laughs> <laughs> but this is a spaceship called the USS yes. Or. Oh, right. And it's basically... Named after the puppet. It really is it. his version of Star Trek. He went to yeah. CBS, pitched them, he said... If you, I'd like to do the new Star Trek show, and they said they were afraid to give, put, take their billion dollar franchise and put it in Seth MacFarlane's <laughs> hands because they didn't know what he would do with it. So then, when they said no to him, he just said, "Okay, I'll make my own show <laughs> that will be remarkably Star Trek related." Yeah. <laughs> there you go. And uh, you, know, you probably get asked this all the time. In fact, you definitely do. But could you say the famous line just on the recording? Of mine? Yeah. I told you. <laughs> Please state the nature of the medical emergency. Probably. Excellent. Yeah, you wouldn't think that's not, that's not a great catchphrase. Thanks for the memories. It's much better. Yeah. <laughs> We've got that too. And so, so is the play going to endure? Is it going to be back at Fringe next year? Is it going to appear who in other knows? venues? Yeah, this who doesn't know? Because he's no longer in charge of the TARDIS. Some <laughs> other feckers taking it off him. <laughs> if I knew, I'd tell you. So we'll watch we don't know. It, it, it may have a future life at this point. We don't, I know the producers are interested in yeah. in doing it elsewhere. Mm-hmm. So, and we've gotten some very nice reviews, including the, a five star review that said that that uh, that the West End and Broadway await. So, yeah, cool. So. Yeah, but it was the Broadway is eating Broadway. All right, full of all things more classy. So, last question. It's the one we always do. Um, I ask, what superpower would you have and why? You know, anyone you can want, anyone you can think of. There is no limit. Yes, and don't say testosterone, man. <laughs> you or can say, say that if you want. You can say it if you want. I would just like to fly. Yeah, right. That's a popular one. That day that saves the effort. Saves you money, yeah. yeah. I would like to do what Superman did, because my real name is Kent. <laughs> so as a child, yeah. I was Clark Kent, and oh. I used to go into... 
uh, telephone boxes and take my clothes off and come out and get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mean have X-ray vision or just everything, Superman? All of them. Really. So, no. I think mind reading would be good mind for reading. me. Yeah. Quite invasive, though. It's very invasive. Yeah. yeah. You, don't want, you, want to, you don't want to know what people really think. Really think it's me. <laughs> you don't want to know what we really I mean, think. I would, I, I've read your mind. It's a very short story. <laughs> yeah. Good answers. Thank you very much. And thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for taking the time to talk to me. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Lovely questions. That was my interview with the cast of A Joke. I wish them all the best with the show and their other projects. If you like what you heard, then hit that subscribe button on iTunes, YouTube, or any major podcasting app. iTunes users, leave us a review and a star rating. And I hope you'll join us on the next Neil Before Pod.